and they want to know what else I was told. Everything was said on the air, DOJ. Everything is done on the air around here. Total transparency is our rule. Now, going back to Joel Scals and WorldAffairsBrief.org, sorry that 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 break cut you off. Let me quantify what I'm saying in my question here because I can, I can ramble and babble. I, day one, thought it could be a secret deal between the globalists like Hitler and Stalin dividing Poland or the Allies making a deal and killing Patton uh, and dividing Berlin and Germany. That's a classic imperial move by two crime blocks, two predatory blocks, as you would call them. And so I agree, I see that there. The larger issue is they've been trying to overthrow Putin. They've been playing a double game. And uh, they have been invading some cities. I do agree that we see some stand downs. I think it's just because things are in such flux. So I'm not denying that you're right, that, that there's a lot of pro-Russian forces in the government. Hell, half the country's Russian probably, or, or leans Russian. But, uh, so I'm not saying they'll take the whole country over. I'm just saying... Do you think there's a backroom deal to partition the country beyond just the Ukrainian government? There's no backroom deal between the West and Putin uh, to do any of this. Putin is running the show and the West is letting him get away with it. There is no attempt by the globalists to overthrow Putin. They want a strong Russia. They want Russia to attack the West someday. So they're going to let him happen. But you You'll notice here that Putin is slowing things down, as I predicted. If he wanted to race and have a justification for war, he would strictly send Russian troops in, invade, and force the West to contest him. He's not doing that. That's why it's very important to understand that he continues, even inside Ukraine, to use massed, um, separatist, massed militarists that he calls a militia. Well, there's no militia in Ukraine at all. So these are militaristic creations of Russia. And what I want to predict to you is that there are six or seven regions in eastern and southern Ukraine that he's going to take next, not by invasion, but just by using the same policy. And remember, East Ukraine government could stop him in an instant by rushing in special forces very quickly, just small teams to stop these attacks on police stations so that none of them were in effect. What we're seeing here, one after another, these police and city stations are falling because they know that no help is coming. It's the same thing that happened with Chiang Kai-shek in China. After the word got out that U.S. was cutting off aid to Chiang Kai-shek and that the Mao would continue to get aid from Russia, the poor soldiers in the barracks were just looking at annihilation so they started to defect and, and the oss and cia personnel that got set up and basically killed on the ground and turned over to the communists famously of course uh, with what happened with john birch so so expanding on that it's been declassified uh, you know what you were just saying about our government helping put mao in the greatest mass murder in history in 49 so i've got to say i think your perspective in my gut may actually be an accurate one and we see a romanization of, of, of Putin kind of by folks that don't like the globalist. But, uh, you know, at the same time, um, I agree with you. Russia's got to know, though, that they're being set up. I mean, they're as smart as we are or smarter, I'm sure, with all their big brains over there. Uh, or will it be their lust for power that ends up causing this World War Three scenario? Yeah, I'm not sure they really understand that they're being set up, that the globalists are. They're really intending to strike the West someday, but they're being careful. Now, let me just continue before my six regions, or six or seven regions. Everybody knows that the Donetsk region, which is in eastern Ukraine, is under assault, and that's probably on May 11th going to vote for some sort of autonomy or independence. Next is Zaporizhia and Kershaw. These are on the south and the east, right above Crimea, land bridge to Crimea. Then there's only two more regions Mukulayev and Odessa to the west on the southern border. If they take those, they've got a direct run right into Moldova, and Putin can then take Moldova. You see, he's encircling the western portion of Ukraine, and yet he's not invading. He gives the west no excuse to contest him because he's using these separatists or these rebels. And while the Ukraine government continues to put out evidence of direct Russian involvement there, um, it's murky enough that Putin can, can, get, can continue to get away with it. And I'll tell you, the NSA has spy equipment on this scene. They could reveal in detail lots of conversations that prove that Russia is in direct intervention here, and they are not doing it. To my mind, that proves that the West 
is not out to expose Putin's plan. They're going to let Putin play his role. And this is going to branch out into the Baltic, uh, Baltic uh, states. It will branch out into portions of Poland, Belarus, and Georgia. Georgia's already been invited into the NATO military um, group. It's not NATO itself, but it's the German uh, Eastern European. And that'll force a new Cold War, forcing different regions to join NATO and the EU or join the Russians, ending independence in that area of the world, which is what the globalists really don't want. Well, they don't want independence, uh, you're right, but they do want Russia to continue to take back the eastern states. At some point, when Russia's ready, it's going to uh, provoke, whether or not it's an eastern provocation, as I predicted, North, uh, North Korea attacking South Korea, or Russia actually starting to actually invade some of these eastern European countries and take the rest of them. Either one of those could provoke World War III and he shows no sign of doing that. That right. proves my point. He's not ready yet. This is going to be a slow burn situation, but it is aiming for World War III. In fact, I'll tell you in my speech to Norway and those people there, they would have been extremely reluctant to believe my scenario about World War III had it not been for what everybody sees now is real Russian strength starting to grow and show. Uh, in uh, in Ukraine. And the sanctions, of course, are just tokenism. I can't believe the second round involves just adding another half a dozen people to the list of uh, restricted bank accounts. I mean, th if anybody can't see, the U.S. and NATO is simply not attempting to do anything to stop Russia. Nothing at all. What about the issue of the State Department spending $5 billion to destabilize Ukraine and having advisors in there? If your uh, idea is right, I know large portions of it are prima facie, you know, on its face true, but if your overall view is correct, then there's got to be a nexus at the highest levels where the system is actually opening the door for Putin and did this overthrow so that their own sleeper cells uh, from the Russian side could then have this excuse to have these regions claim that they want autonomy? Well, we have to remember that this $5 billion figure was uh, strictly from one source. This was Victoria Newland talking to a pro-Ukrainian audience, and I don't believe that that $5 billion by any means was ever spent inside Ukraine. You can't, in a country like Ukraine, inject without it showing up, obviously. There's just no way. It's way Do you think she just said that to then even legitimize what Putin's doing more? Well, what I think she did, I think she was exaggerating. I think $5 billion is probably the, the black budget for all of the post-Eastern Eastern European states, and none of that hardly gets into the country. Most of that is to German foundations and Austrian and Hungarian and Romanian uh, globalist foundations. Most of it's going to their own kind of people. Yes, they are giving scholarships. They are throwing that money around. You know, but that money was not injected directly into Ukraine. Otherwise, it would have showed up. The audience there and using the figure for all of Eastern Europe as if it applied strictly to Ukraine. All right. Well, Joel, we'll have you back for a full hour soon. I appreciate you coming on. We're about to go to Tosh Plumley. But I'd like you to give your take on the new Benghazi revelations, the hour-long press conference going with Carney uh, on the ropes, the fact that the White House did lie on record, and the State Department said they had no emails, knew nothing for, you know, eight hours. Knew, and now we know uh, minutes into it, they were watching it, putting out talking points. Uh, a, why has this been released now? Are, are, is the system getting ready to take down Obama? Or what do you make of this? No, I don't believe uh, it's taking down Obama. What is very interesting about this whole email controversy is that Obama and Hillary Clinton play zero role. There's zero reference in any email to Hillary Clinton or Obama, and that proves my point, that they have nothing to do with the running of day-to-day -day operations of the government. These are uh, you know, national security councils and advisors and State Department people, long-term cadres that are running this globalist show and they're simply the figureheads and the puppets. But remember, even though what Tosh Plumley says about the, the running of guns and the, those types is absolutely true, the real smoking gun of the Benghazi thing is the stand-down order, and nobody is picking that one up like a hot potato. Even though General Ham said directly to a Congress, 
Congressional Committee, there was a stand on order given to me, and I was relieved within two minutes of refusing that order. And not a single congressman asked him, who gave that stand down order to you? Don't you find that odd? That a congressman who should be shocked at that revelation would have asked, well, who, who told you to stand down? Not a single one did so. And that's the big smoking gun. Nothing, I believe, is going to blow wide open unless the establishment lets that one go. And the chances of blowing that open are, are, are zero to nil. Even Ham has not come out since his retirement and said who it was. Neither has Admiral Goyette, who both had a stand on order. That's the big issue. We'll bring that up with Tosh Plumley. Thank you so much, Joel Scalzi and WorldAffairsBrief.org. My pleasure, Alex. Or is it .com? And again, uh, I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Now, I'm not going to go over his whole bio 